I don't think that you could conclude based on the available evidence that the Braves only picked this guy because he stood against cancel culture. But I will say this, if they did, good. Good. They should have. Everything the Braves have done this season should have been a giant middle finger to cancel culture after they got canceled. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now well, you've messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> The Braves also asked Travis Tritt to sing the anthem during Game 6 of the National League Championship, and this became kind of a thing. So recently, the reason that this became a big news story is this Travis Tritt, uh, he recently got in the spotlight for opposing vaccine mandates, which apparently is the greatest cardinal sin a person can commit nowadays. Not against the vaccines themselves, just against the vaccine mandates, because what he said was he would not perform at a venue that, re that was going to be checking people's vaccinated status. And so, you know, guy can do what he wants, and he says he has freedom of association just like everybody else says, if a venue is going to do that, I'm just not going to sing at that venue. And so because of this, the people on the left took great issue with this. And so we'll go ahead and, and look at Travis Tritt, who actually tweeted out about this. So this is Travis Tritt. Good gravy. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. There we go. Sorry about that. So Travis Tritt tweets out, boy, that's hard to say. Try saying that three times fast. So the wingnut cancel culture tried to pressure the Atlanta Braves into forcing me not to sing the national anthem at game six of the National League Championship Series. I'm so thankful that the Braves did not cave to this pressure and refuse to be bullied. Thank you for allowing me to pay tribute to America. So I do appreciate Travis Tritt, you know, giving kudos where they are deserved. And he's right. The Braves could have caved to cancel culture or just uh, gotten rid of him because of that. But they refused to do that. And I really appreciate them for doing so. I'll say this. This proves something that I've been saying for a very long time. The right is more tolerant than the left and always has been. And part of it is especially true when it comes to entertainment because we have to do it more. You know, you look at Hollywood, the vast majority of people that are actors, performers, singers, artists, musicians, vast majority of them are super liberal. But that does not stop conservatives from enjoying their art. And the reason that it doesn't is because we've just gotten used to it. And frankly, I think we are naturally more tolerant. Okay, you believe that. I think you're completely wrong, but it doesn't mean I can't buy your CD. It doesn't mean I can't go see your movie with my family. Now, sometimes we will make exceptions to that rule, but by and large, the right is far more tolerant about that than the left is. Because with the right, we have to deal with that pretty much all the time. With the left, it happens one time and they freak out about it. I mean, like a whole bunch of people on the, the left are going to see Travis Tritt anyway, but they get very upset about that and don't think that he should be allowed to sing at Game 6 of the National League Championship Series. Again, the right is just more tolerant than the left. And there was this follow-up tweet that came from a New York Times reporter. This is Rob Tannenbaum who was tweeting out about it. Travis Tritt has, a, has had a lot of hits in his day, but his last top 10 single was almost 20 years ago. His politics are the only reason the Braves booked him. He's the closest they can come to the tomahawk chop in human form. Okay, so first of all, before we get into the utter ridiculousness of what he's suggesting, let's actually see if what he is saying is true. One thing he seems to not really understand is that when it comes to these things, they're largely honorary, and actually it's pretty common to have stars that are a little bit past their heyday to do them. Not because the people are not talented, because they're still just as talented in most cases as they were back then, but they're not the hot thing right now, and because of that, they have more free time and can do things that are non-paying gigs like sing the national anthem at a baseball game. So this is a pretty common thing that happens. He's acting like if they're not a top 10 recording artist that's at the top of the charts right now, then obviously the only reason that they would ever have to book him must be because 
you know, he's a conservative and, and they're wanting to do the chop and the tomahawk chop in human form, which again, I don't even see why anyone finds that offensive. Every person I've ever met that had a problem with it was an old white angry liberal. So, you know, <laughs> there's that, first of all. But the second part of that is Jack Ingram. He actually sang, uh, another country singer, he actually sang the anthem before game six of the American League Championship Series in Boston. So also game six, different league, but also the championship series, the playoffs. And Jack Ingram, a country recording artist. Pretty good one-to-one -one comparison there, right? Well, actually, Jack Ingram, the last time he had a top 100 hit, not a top 10 like this guy was alleging, a top 100 hit, anything in the top 100, was wherever you are at number 31 in 2006. So, obviously, the uber, uber red state of Massachusetts and the very red city of Boston, one of the most liberal cities in the country, their team obviously only booked this guy because he's a giant middle finger to cancel culture, right? I mean, there had to be some kind of political motivation because this guy doesn't even come close to the level of accomplishment that Travis Tritt has. So the allegation he's making there is just based on absolutely nothing. People that are a little bit past their prime tend to be the people that occupy these spots. And, you know, you're comparing this. This guy has nowhere near the, the musical career that Travis Tritt does. And so I don't think that you could conclude, based on the available evidence, that the Braves only picked this guy because he stood against cancel culture. But I will say this. If they did, good. Good. They should have. Everything the Braves have done this season should have been a giant middle finger to cancel culture after they got canceled. And if you don't like the fact that they're doing these things or making these decisions politically, if you're on the left and that bothers you, maybe it's a time to look in the mirror. Because they got canceled. And maybe this is retaliation. I don't know. But if it is, fine. See, here's the thing. I actually want sports to be apolitical. I really do. I want sports to be completely free of that. And that, you know, because I'm a Braves fan, I can sit down and talk baseball with you. Regardless of whether or not you're a Republican or Democrat, who you voted for, the, your stance on certain issues, that shouldn't matter because we're just there to enjoy a baseball game together. See, sports used to be something that unified us. And if you were around the water cooler, you know, talking to your coworkers, it didn't really matter whether or not he was a Republican or a Democrat because you could still talk about, you know, what happened on the Tonight Show last night or, you know, your favorite baseball or football team. We don't have that avenue anymore and we're losing our common spaces specifically because you guys had to make everything political. You're acting like we're the aggressors in this. And I say we because it's the Atlanta Braves, but I don't know if the Atlanta Braves made this call because of that or not. What I am saying is, if they did, you guys are the ones that started it. You're the ones that wanted to bring politics into everything, painting Black Lives Matter on NBA courts and putting Black Lives Matter messages in end zones. And, you know, the whole thing with the uh, Colin Kaepernick and kneeling thing or uh, players coming in. And you guys are the ones that wanted to politicize every aspect of our society. So you can't act all surprised about this. You can't step into the boxing ring and throw some punches and then get mad when the other guy retaliates. And so if they did this, that's fine. You canceled them first. You can't get mad at them for making this political because you're the one that started the political dance back and forth. I'd be fine with every sports team just agreeing, you know what, we're a baseball company. There's no reason for us to get involved in this crap but you guys are the ones that started this. Don't dish it out if you can't take it. This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.